Afternoon, guys. Okay, believe it or not, this is not a video on war. <laughs> Ukraine, Israel, anything, okay? Uh, this is actually a lot more prepping related and something that we all need to pay attention to, especially those of you that are out west. Uh, with everything that's been going on lately in Europe, we've kind of not paid a whole lot of attention to what's going on domestically. And being preppers, we kind of should be watching that too. So I take a lot of the blame for not staying up on this as well. Uh, so if anybody's noticed right now, 38% of the country is in a drought. And I mean, and this is springtime. This is when the rains come. Okay. Uh, we are now, for the most part, the western third of the country is in either a severe or ex extreme drought. Uh, I can kind of speak a little bit of this from living in Salt Lake, living in Vegas, living in El Paso. Uh, you know, it's all desert area. So you kind of get it. Okay. Uh, but being down in Vegas, Lake Mead, okay, and if you guys are familiar, Lake Mead and Lake Powell are the two biggest freshwater reservoirs, okay, freshwater lakes would be the Great Lakes, but the freshwater reservoirs are Lake Mead and Lake Powell. Lake Mead, where Hoover Dam is, basically flows off the Colorado River, sits there at the border of Arizona and Nevada. Lake Mead provides the water for Nevada, Arizona, uh, California. And right now, Lake Mead is at 40% of capacity. Okay. Now, if you've ever been out to Hoover Dam or if you've seen pictures of Hoover Dam, I've been out there within the last few years, so I've seen it, you will see... If you look at the water line, there's, there's a huge discoloration where it's all white down the sides of the rock face. That's where the water level was. So that's how far down the water is. If you go look at pictures of it, you'll see what I mean, how uh, low the water is. Now, I want you to think about this for a reason. Hoover Dam is a hydroelectric dam, so this is where the power comes from. For parts of the area. All right. A lot of Las Vegas gets its power from Hoover Dam. But Southern California, Nevada, Vegas, the whole Vegas area, everything, and then a lot of Arizona get their water from Lake Mead, which of course flows down the Colorado River from the snows that you get up north, and that's how the water comes in. Now, I want you to think about this. California used to be a desert, all right, and now it's, you know, lush green farmland. All right. They don't have enough water for agriculture in California. And I want to give you an idea of what grows. One third of the vegetables that we eat in the United States come from California. And two thirds of the fruit that we eat comes from California. Imagine knocking that out. Okay. Imagine California goes back to desert and we wind up in a uh, a water crisis again, all right? But this is, just to give you an idea, 99% of walnuts, 97% of kiwis, 97% of plums, 95% of celery, 95% of garlic, 89% of cauliflower, 71% of spinach, 69% of carrots that are consumed in the United States come from California. Now, if you take... California out of the picture, and all of a sudden we don't have that food, this kind of goes back into why I've been saying left and right, grow your gardens, grow your gardens, grow your gardens, because if you can't eat relatively healthy, I mean, getting some of those vegetables in, I mean, you certainly can't, but you, you can't live on McDonald's, okay? Uh, you need to be growing your own food because if this drought keeps going on in California and the food doesn't grow, A, we know the prices in the store are going to go through the roof, okay? So you need, need to get it from somewhere. And then there's going to be such a demand and shortage of anything, you're going to have a hard time getting anything. Now, the drought isn't only happening in on the West Coast, 
Okay, and I mean, not even the West Coast. I mean, this is everywhere from Texas, uh, parts of Oklahoma, Colorado, Nebraska, the Dakotas, I mean, and all West. But you also have Michigan going through this, New England going through this, and Florida going through some of this drought. I mean, this is, I mean, Michigan's apples, Florida's all your citrus. I mean, you know, a lot of, a lot of the rest of the food comes from Florida. So we could be in a serious hurt for getting fruits and vegetables this year if drought doesn't get any better. Now, we've all seen every year California wildfires and the devastation it does. Imagine how dry it is right now. This is April, okay? Again, like I say, spring, and they're not getting any rain. You know, uh, not that I'm a fan of Gavin Newsom, but, uh, you know, he has declared a couple of counties in California uh, under emergency because there's no water. I mean, and where did he do this from? He was standing in Lake Oroville uh, on a dry lake bed where he should have been 40 feet underwater. Okay, so and the lake is dry. So, you know, giving you this as an idea, we we all know this. We say this left and right. You know, every prepper thinks about it. Stock water, stock water, rain barrels, bottled water, whatever you got, 55-gallon drums, your well, whatever it would be. But remember what water is needed for, not only for us to drink, but cows, chickens, pigs, all that food, okay? You know, I think, what is it, about a third of the... Uh, livestock that we get, or dairy at least, comes from California. Well, if you don't have any cows because you can't feed them because there's no grain and you can't water them because there's no water, there's no cows, there's no dairy. So, you know, kind of think about how this goes. You know, everything doesn't stop here like the Democrats think. There's further things going forward. So, you know, water issues are going to be very huge. And again, this comes right back into why you need to be planting fruit trees, why you need to be planting vegetables, because not only is an economic catastrophe upon us that you know, we all see food costs, okay? Not only is the economic catastrophe upon us and inflation going like crazy, but now if you get supply and demand and there is no supply, you know, now, I mean, go look at what you're paying for vegetables now, and I'm not even talking organic or anything like this. I'm just talking, you know, your regular stuff. You know, you're paying a buck and a half to two bucks a pound for tomatoes. You know, now imagine that goes up to four to five dollars a pound for tomatoes. Are you eating tomatoes? Maybe not, okay? Can you grow tomatoes? Yeah, you can grow a lot of tomatoes pretty easily, all right? Fortunately for the majority of us in the Southeast uh, and about half the Midwest, I mean, anywhere east of the Mississippi River, uh, we're not facing those drought conditions yet, okay? So, you know, all of us in these regions have the ability to grow things. And I'm going to say this as something to help your fellow Americans. If, you know, let's go back to Victory Garden type deal, okay? World War II stuff. If we have the ability to grow in Missouri, Mississippi, Tennessee, Ohio, Indiana, whatever it would be, if we can grow our own and we don't have to buy it from the stores, sure, the stores are going to suffer because they're not selling anything, but I give a rat's ass about the stores, okay? Then maybe that will leave a little bit more of that fresh produce to go to some of these states and these people that are in these drought stricken areas and the prices won't go at, uh, through the roof for them. So, you know, th this is a way where even if we don't live in the area that's affected, i.e., me, I can do something that can help other people uh, survive. You know, so again, not only does this you know, prepping affect you and affect me, you know, by doing it for ourselves. But sometimes our actions can also help other people, help our countrymen, and that's kind of important. So pay attention to this, uh, you know, watch what's going on, pray for a little bit of rain out west, they can really use it, but, you know, get ready for 
constant news over the summer of wildfires out west because the whole place is a tinderbox unless they get a miracle May again like they had in 2014 where it just poured rain on them like crazy. So, okay, I wanted to give you something for the afternoon, something else to think about. Water, 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 water. Water is life. It is the number one thing we need. You know, do whatever you can to get water, okay? And the less that we use maybe a little bit more they can have. So, you know, start water restrictions out there. You know, obviously you're not watering your lawn, you know, but they say, oh, now you're going to take a shower every other day. But imagine how much water is used by, you know, vineyards and vegetable farms and stuff like that. If they can't water the food, there ain't no food. So just a quick heads up for you guys. Have a good afternoon. Pimble out.